So I couldn't find two rappers, so I had to do it with these two guys. Same goes for Jesus Dining Room, but that doesn't stop us from recreating the Kendrick Lamar video clip Humble. So let's see how we can do that inside Premiere Pro. Hey guys, it's Jordy here for Cinecom.net and today is again a very excited premiere tutorial because we are going to recreate the camera shake effect from the latest video clip Humble from Kendrick Lamar. Now I can't show you the effect because of some copyright issues, but you can find a link to it straight to that effect so that you can see it within that video clip. Now before we can start in Premiere, we do have to make some preparations when it comes down to recording this clip. It's not completely done digitally in Premiere, you actually need to have a four camera setup as you can see in this example here. Now we are using a Nikon DSLR, the Canon 5D2, the GH4 and also the latest GH5. All of them have different lenses, so this is definitely not ideal. Because what you want to do is make sure that the frame sizes of all these cameras are exactly the same in this square setup as well. And was able to mount a camera on top of another camera with these ball heads. And you can get these from eBay for just a couple of bucks. Anyways, if you don't have like four DSLRs, you can also try and do it with two cameras, I'm pretty sure it will work as well. Or you can also just ask your friends and just gather some smartphones together and just record it with four smartphone cameras. That's also perfectly possible. So again, you want to make sure that your subject sits in the exact same position for each camera. So that means in the middle of each camera. And also, again, the frame size. Try to match them as closely as possible. And once you've done that, you can go straight into Premiere Pro and you can see that we have the four camera angles right here. Now, very importantly, when you are going to record your clips is that you are going to create a synchronization point. Let me just show you this in camera one here. In the beginning of the clip, you'll can see here, Janik here, he's clapping his hands together. And that is a clear point on which we can synchronize all of these angles together. So let's start doing that. I'm going to locate the point where his hands are going to meet for the first time with each other that's on this point. And I'm going to set an in point right here. And you can do that with the short key I on your keyboard. Then do the same thing for camera angle number two. Locate that point where his two hands are coming together. Press the I button. The next camera right here. And camera angle number four right there. So once that this is all done, I'm going to right click on every single clip and say new sequence from clip. Do it also for camera number two. New sequence from clip. Camera three. And camera four. So now we have each camera angle inside a sequence, as you can see right here. And you will see in just a minute why that we're doing this. But then the next thing what we want to do is create a multi-camera sequence. So this is also a great tutorial if you are doing live shows or anything like that. It works exactly the same. So what you want to do is select all of your sequences now. So camera one sequence, camera two, three, and four. You can hold down your control key to uh, select multiple clips or sequences in here, then right click on those sequences and say create multi-camera source sequence. It will prompt you with several settings. The most important setting in here is that you synchronize it on the endpoints. That's what we've done here in the beginning. So make sure that is checked and then just give that any name, for example, the camera chic, and then just press OK. So all the sequences are now inside this processed clips folder and we can find a new sequence, but this here is actually a multi-camera sequence and we're going to treat this as a clip. So that means a clip has to be inside a sequence. Hope you can still follow here. So I'm going to drag this multi-camera sequence inside this new item button down below here. That will create a new sequence and import that clip right into it as well. Now, the big advantage of working with such a multi-camera sequence is that we can very easily switch between the camera angles with just a press of a button. And Premiere also has a very easy workflow to get that done. You want to right click here in your program monitor and head over to display mode. From here, you can see that we can select multi-camera. Click on that and that will also show you all these sources. So what you can do now is kind of enlarge this panel here. So I'm going to drag this to the left so that you can see it better. On the left side here, we can see all the sources, which are those four clips. And then here on the right side, we can see the final output. So for example, we can click on these camera angles to actually switch to those. You can also see it here in the name of that multi-camera clip that it's changing. We are now at camera one. And if we click on camera four, you can see that changing here as well. 
Now you can also very easily switch between these camera angles by just pressing the number keys on your keyboard. So that's one, two, three, and four. But before we're going to do that, we're first going to match these clips because you will see that the camera angles are not so perfectly matched. Same goes for the color. By the way, you also want to make sure that the white balance and the camera profiles are somehow as close as possible to each other so that we have to do minimal color correction and post to match these clips together. So what you want to do now is head into those sequences that we've created before. And that is the sequence for camera one, two, three, and four. You want to select your clip and head over to window and select Lumetri color to bring up that panel to do your color corrections. And then you kind of want to go back and forward between these different angles and kind of look where the differences are. I can see here, for example, between camera one and two, that here the colors seem to be a bit more vivid. So I'm going to increase the saturation for camera one. It's a tiny bit better, perhaps also change the color temperature. So this here is a process that you have to go through. Just kind of go back and forward between these four clips and kind of change the colors so that they kind of match as close as possible. And mostly that is the exposure, saturation, contrast, and the temperature. I'm just going to go quickly through this. Something like this would be okay. It's not perfect yet, but I guess that you know the idea. So Jenik here is ready to start wrapping, but you know, he is not really in the same position for each clip. So also that is something that we have to fix in here. What I'm going to do is create some sort of a shabloon or a mask so that I can kind of put him in the right position. So first of all, I'm going to start at the point where I want to put that camera shake into action. For example, right here when he leans forward and it's at that point where I want to have like for a couple of seconds that camera shake and then it goes back. So I'm going to create a new title. You can either do that from the button here and select uh, title or you can also just press the control T on your keyboard to create a new title. And uh, let's just call this mask, for example, press OK. And it's pretty big here on my other screen. Just gonna make it a bit smaller. There you go. And what you want to do now is kind of create a shape and you can take the rectangle tool for that and just draw a shape around Janik's face like that. You want to go into the graphic type and select open bezier. And finally for the color, for the stroke around it, you want to go for something like red. It doesn't really matter. It's just so that it's a bit more visible. And uh, perhaps you can also kind of increase the line white if that helps as well. So now it's very important that you're going to match his face into that box. So that means make sure that these lines here are just touching his cheek here, curly hair here on top and also here on the side. So you can see what I'm doing here because we're going to use this as a measurement. So I'm going to make sure that he will always stay within this frame close the titler and drag in that mask on that position here where you believe that the camera shake should take place. Then go a bit further in time and kind of look until where you want to have that camera shake to take place and just shorten that mask. So it's on this point right here where that camera shake is going to take place. What you want to do now is make sure that Janik will always stay within that frame. And we found out that it's going to be easier if your character is going to sit still. Janik here, he's rapping pretty hard. He's not sitting still, so it's going to be pretty hard to get that same effect from Kendrick. Afterwards, we also noticed that he sat pretty still, so uh, there's a reason for it. You want to make sure that your clip is selected, not your mask. Head over to Effects Controls, and from here, I'm just going to make this a bit larger. And you can go back, by the way, to the display mode composite video here. We're going to go back to multicam in just a minute. So now you want to kind of track his position here within that rectangle. You can use your arrow keys to go forward and kind of see what happens here. So here you can see that he's turning his head. So I'm going to create a keyframe for the position on that point. Go a little bit further in time. And what I'm going to do now is change the position of that to so Janik's face sits perfectly within that rectangle. And I'm also making sure that his curly hair here on top is touching that rectangle. Same goes here for the side somehow. So you want to go forward again, see where his head goes and always make sure that he's somehow in that same position. We are kind of doing here a manual stabilization on Janik. The scale is by the way something we're not going to animate, only the position. So it could be when he's going to lean backwards that the rectangle is not touching his head anymore, but that's okay. When that happens, try to have like an equal gap here between his head and the rectangle. And there we go. And if we are going to play this, you will see that he will be beautifully tracked within that frame. And that's the entire idea of this. What you then want to do is kind of copy the time frame here in the beginning of that mask. Just uh, select that, press Ctrl C or Command C for the Mac users, and head over to camera number three, 
paste that in there as well. Camera number two, we're going to do the exact same thing, paste that time frame in there, and also for camera number one. So now we are always on the exact same point. Head back to camera number four, take your mask, also copy that with Control C, head over to camera number two. And now it's very important that you are going to set the input here of your channels to video channel number two and deselect video channel number one. So you wanna make sure that it looks like this and then press Control V again to paste it. So now we're going to paste that mask and we are 100% sure that it's on the same position as with camera number four. And uh, let's do the exact same thing now with camera number two. We are on that time frame here. Change your input to channel number two, like that, and press Control V. And do the exact same thing now for the last camera. There we go. And now you kinda wanna do the same thing for all the rest of the cameras, but sometimes you will notice that the beginning point is already pretty off. So you wanna change that position as well. And the same goes for the scale. I noticed that in camera number three, I was a bit closer as camera number four. So I'm going to scale it down just a tiny bit here. So that his curly hair touches the above line of the rectangle. His cheek is down below here and we are just touching his face on the right and the left side. This is the beginning position. And we wanna match that with camera angle number four here, that the size of his face within that frame is somehow the same. This is very important. Again, we are not going to animate the scale, but you do wanna set the scale as a beginning position. And once you've done that and you are satisfied with the position of these two beginning frames that they kind of match, then you can start animating the position again, just like we did with camera four. So there we go. All these camera angles are now matched with each other. The position now should be everywhere the same. You can just disable those video layers here because perhaps you might wanna go back if something didn't went as expected. So now we can go back to the main sequence here, the camera shake sequence, and we can cut these into the camera shake. But before we do so, we're first going to take a quick break for the sponsor. Premium Beat has joined forces with talented bands to build an impressive collection of royalty-free vocal tracks. Whether you need an authentic indie song to liven up a party scene or upbeat electro pop to energize your next vlog, this collection is a perfect way to feature pro-quality vocal music in your video without breaking the bank on licensing fees. Head their collection at the link in the video description below or visit premiumbeat.com for more. Welcome back, folks. We're going to set the display mode back to multi-camera. And I'm going to enlarge this panel again as well so that we can see all of these angles here perfectly. Now, before we start, we wanna make sure that we are at the exact same position as where we want the effect to take place. So I'm going to go back to one of these cameras, uh, make sure to stand on that position here of the mask. And uh, once you are there, you kinda of wanna copy that time frame again and paste that into your final sequence so that we know that we are in that position where we want to start. Now it's actually pretty simple. You kind of want to go one frame forward and then you want to cut to any of these camera angles. Now what they were doing was going to go into a Z. So that means that we're starting from the top left camera, then go to the right camera, then go to the bottom left and then to the bottom right camera. And just kind of going back and forward between these and again, you wanna to cut to these for each frame. So I'm going to press one frame forward by just pressing the arrow keys on my keyboard. And what you don't wanna do is not really select camera number angle one, but cut to it. And that can be done by holding down the control key and then press one. And you will see that it then create this cut. Then go one frame forward, press control two, one frame forward, press control three, one frame forward, press control four. But you can also change these shortcuts from your uh, shortcuts menu here on top. When you head over to edit, say keyboard shortcuts, and you wanna search for camera in here. And you will see here that cut to camera is all with the controls. You can change this of course to uh, just directly with the one key. So one frame forward, camera one, one frame forward, camera two. And this, you just wanna continue as long as your mask was. And by the way, you can again, copy that mask here. Just to kind of know the time frame. select video channel number two and press paste. And just going to align this to the beginning of where I was starting and that was right here on four seconds and one frame. And to make sure that your multi-camera is working again, you wanna select uh, video channel number one as well here. So now we can go to camera two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There we go. And if everything went well now, we can shut off the channel number two 
with the mask and if you are going to play this back and again if everything went well with the tracking of Janik he should stay perfectly in the middle and have a nice camera shake let's see how it looks Isn't that awesome? So his face sits perfectly here in the middle. We still see a lot of flickering and that's also because of the color grading, which isn't perfect yet. But you know what, you guys, you can download the project file from the description below. And there you will see that I've done a bit more tweaks to it so that you can have a better view of the final result. There's only one last thing that we want to do here. You can see that this frame is also flickering and that's because we've played with the scale and the position. So we want to fix that again. You want to go to the end here where we have some more space, select that part of the multi-camera and just kind of increase here the scale, perhaps also the position so that we close in on everything and that we don't see any Thing of those black bars anymore. And once that is done, you can just copy the motion here, select that and say Control C again to copy that. And then just select all your clips in here and say Control V. And now you will see that we don't have that anymore here in the edges. So now the effect should look even a little bit more better. So you can see Janik here just wrapping his stuff. If Janik would have sit still, the results were a lot better. Also, we are using four different cameras and lenses, so note that as well. If you can get four of the same cameras plus lenses, then the results will be a lot better as well. So that's it guys, Janik here is going to wrap a bit further while you guys can download the project file like I mentioned before. Make sure to subscribe as well, we're putting out multiple videos a week. And again, thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, because I know you will. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay creative.